Hello friends and welcome to this video. Today I'm going to be teaching how to paint fur in five easy steps. To keep things simple, I'm only using black and white and painting black fur. So let's jump right to it and go into step one. Step one is to paint the background. So for this, I've mixed together a dark gray and I'm just filling the page. This dark grey will give a good basis to paint lighter fur strands on top of it. A top tip for painting fur is to use a reference. Especially as a beginner, it's a lot easier to see the darks and the lights and the different variation of direction of fur when using a reference photo compared to our imagination. Once I was relatively happy that I'd covered this whole area, it was time for step two. So step two is to block out the fur chunks. Right now I am mixing a dark grey but lighter than the background colour and using a medium round brush just to block out where I can see chunks of fur. This is a really important process of painting fur as you'll often see fur not going in one direction only but different variation throughout the painting of the directions that they're going in. I then repeat this process by using a slightly lighter grey and I'm just blocking out where those fur areas are but not covering as much as I had previously done. When you do this step, be sure not to paint over fully what you painted over before and be sure to leave some gaps just to give those shadows and highlights realistic effects. Step three is to paint those fine details and for this I'm using a very light grey. But I'm using a detailed round brush for this process. At this point, I am trying to map out all of those individual furs that I can see not every single one, but enough that I can leave gaps in between to give an in-depth look. As I mentioned before, when you're doing this process, try and keep the gaps between your previous layers just so that you can see the variation of colours in the fur. At this point in the painting, I thought some of the chunks of fur were blending into each other a bit too much, so I went in with the black just to separate these chunks, so just outlining around them. So don't be afraid to pick up your black if you also need to do this too. Once I was happy with those black areas that I added, I then went back to the light grey colour that I had previously mixed and really trying to pay attention to doing really fine and light strokes. Painting fur is really all about layers. I then decided to repeat this process with one more layer of light grey. This is just to give some real definition and contrast in comparison to the dark background. And I really believe this helps to make the fur pop and come to life. I really recommend that when you're doing these fine fine hairs, be sure to use as small a brush as you have, as the finer it is, the more realistic your outcome will be. Step four is to block in those root shadows. For this step, I mixed together a dark grey that was really translucent, so in my acrylic paints, I added a lot of water. I then looked at my painting and I imagined where each of these furs were originating from, so the very roots of them, and tried to darken them up with this translucent mix just to give the effect of shadow, as you'd expect at the roots of these furs. I think this step really brings the fur to life and makes it a lot more believable. Step five is the final step of the process and it is to tone the painting. And for this step, I noticed that my reference photo 
had a more bluey tinge to it so I used a Payne's Grey which has a tinge of blue and I watered it down with lots of water and I just covered my painting with this wash as I wanted to have that blue tinge in this painting. This step is completely optional but I really think it's that final touch that makes a difference. Apologies it's really shiny on camera right now but I can show you the results right here. As you can see the painting has now dried and that touch of Payne's grey has really brought this painting to life. Using a wash of paint like this I would consider a good tip for paintings in general as it's almost like you're applying a filter like you would to a photo but onto your painting to give a cohesive look. If you've enjoyed this video be sure to let me know down in the comments as I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't checked out my previous tutorial on how to paint a dog's eye be sure to check it out here.